Well, I was on the uh, floor of the Senate, as most senators were, when we heard a disturbance in the hallway, the hallway that connects the House and the Senate across the, the old Capitol. And it, at first, I didn't think much of it uh, because we have disturbances. Uh, we have them normally in the balconies where visitors come and they decide to protest a vote and they all stand up and start screaming or clapping or cheering or undoing banners and then they're escorted away by the uh, Capitol Police and that's the end of it. And so when I first heard this disturbance in the hallway, I thought, oh, there's a small group of, of folks who are, are upset about the, the fact that we are at work counting ballots uh, and want to disrupt it, but, but no big deal. And then uh, folks from the sergeant at arms and McConnell's office uh, came in and they didn't come in and walk down the center aisle, they ran down the center aisle. People do not run in the US Senate. They ran up to the podium. They swept away the vice president. Uh, they had uh, the session gaveled to a close. Uh, and all of us are kind of going like, wow, uh, what's going on? And what was going on at that time was Goodman was steering that initial group coming up the staircase out into the main hallway where there were other officers who were starting to confront that, uh, that group. Uh, there was then a, uh, a lockdown effort. We were first told to leave the chamber by a certain door and then so no, 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 stay right where you are. And there was a lockdown process. So you're being locked into the Senate chamber and you're kind of in your head going, is this a good idea or a bad idea? I mean, it would be better for us to make a quick trip out the back door and, and to somewhere safer or because now we're locked in here and what is this threat? So people start firing up their, uh, their phones, their smartphones to see, uh, see what's going, going on. And even then it wasn't apparent the size and ferocity of the threat. We did not have what the house did with members inside the chamber while people were essentially busting windows and uh, screaming bloody murder and, and members of the house were putting furniture up against the doors. The Senate was what's much calmer. Uh, that action was the, the action on the house side uh, was much more powerful. Maybe that was because a major target was that people knew that the counting of ballots actually happens on the House side. Maybe it's because they, that uh, Nancy Pelosi had been put forward as an enemy of the people to this crowd. So they were for the House side. So the House had a, a, a more intense initial uh, assault. The, um, it was very clear that there, the, whatever training there had been for locking down the Senate, locking the doors, probably needed a refresher course and, and, and significant drills because you could see the confusion, like who was supposed to go where to lock which doors and do they have the keys and how do you ban that? And up in the, you know, up above the, the podium in the Senate is the press gallery and I could, the press doors were swinging back open back and forth. That clearly wasn't locked down and uh, press came in, came in and out a little bit during that uh, phase. Uh, and then we were, uh, we were, we're told that uh, a safe path had been cleared and for us all moved very, very quickly. Uh, and we were taken to a, a safe room uh, that I'll just leave it at, at, at that. Uh, the, um, we were in there for many hours um, uh, and a lot of the conversation was about how to, uh, when, when things calmed down, when we were, when uh, the security personnel were able to take control of the Capitol, that we needed to get back and finish the counting of ballots. So this is important to our Republic. Uh, meanwhile, that uh, night, I went down to check on my hideaway office, which is on the first floor of the Capitol in the old Capitol before the wings were built. So it's right under the, underneath the old Senate chambers. And um, the door had been broken through and just everything trashed. Uh, one guy who sat in, sat in there with his feet up and smoked marijuana has been arrested. Uh, things were torn off the walls, trash, trash every, everywhere. Um, and um, that's just a little personal piece of, of it. Um, obviously, I wasn't injured and I never really felt terribly threatened, uh, but some of my colleagues were trapped in hideaways with people pounding on the door, screaming to string them up or put blood on the floor or so forth. And they were, they were absolutely, absolutely, totally terrified. And uh, lives, were, lives were lost. Um, three police officers are dead. Uh, more than a hundred officers had injuries and it's, the number kept growing, but the injuries included things like uh, irritation from pepper spray. So 
uh, I, it's, it's hard to get your hands around how many really serious injuries there were, uh, but a, there were a lot of really serious injuries and there were a, a lot of uh, more modest injuries, but it was terrifying to the, to, uh, the Capitol Police uh, who had never seen a crowd start to attack them. I mean, people, you know, you, normally you have, a, you have peaceful protesters who may be angry about something, but they're not about to uh, start assaulting police officers. And that is part of what happened that day is that even though there were warnings that this crowd was different, this crowd was coming with malintent, they were coming with coordination, they were coming with firearms, they were coming with, with plans, they were intending to break in. At some level on the intelligence analysis and the leadership of the Capitol Police that was like, that's, that's, just, that's just crazy talk. I mean, that's not the way citizens behave. Two centuries, nobody's assaulted the Capitol. That, that is not going to occur. 